Good morning, boys and girls, Sunday school friends, wherever you may be. Pastor Eric here with you once again on this rather dismal and rainy Thursday. Hopefully by the time you're watching this, it is a beautiful spring Sunday morning, wherever you may be. Thank you for watching today. We are on Lesson 31. We've done 30 one videos of Sunday School Lessons already. We're continuing on. We are on 31, The Fiery Furnace, on page 127 in your Bible story book. Ezekiel was one of the two great prophets God raised up from the first group of exiles to Babylon. The other was Daniel and his three friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. You might know them better by the new names that they got in Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the king called Daniel a new name too, Belteshazzar, 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 something like that, okay? These four friends were young when they were taken into exile. They were trained to serve as wise men in Nebuchadnezzar's court. And God worked through Daniel and his friends to make sure Nebuchadnezzar and the other kings who followed him would know and honor Israel's God and protect his people. But Nebuchadnezzar was a proud man. He built a huge golden statue of himself that rose high above the ground. Nebuchadnezzar ordered all the people to bow down to his statue when they heard the music start. And anyone who would not bow down would be thrown into a fiery furnace. But Daniel's three friends were not afraid of the king. They knew God was the only one who ruled over heaven and earth, and they refused to bow down to king's statue. Nebuchadnezzar was furious. He repeated his directions and told them that if they did not obey, they would be thrown into the furnace, and no god would be able to deliver them out of his hands. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego told the king, Our god, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Nebuchadnezzar was so furious, he told his servants to heat up the furnace even hotter. He ordered his strongest, bravest soldiers to tie up the three men and throw them into the fiery furnace. And the furnace was so hot that when the soldiers pushed them in, the flames leaped out and killed the soldiers. But when the king looked into the fiery furnace, fiery furnace, he was astonished. He didn't see just three men. I see four men, unbound, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. He was so astonished, he told the three servants of God to come out. When they came out, everyone rushed up to see if they were burned, but they were totally unhurt. Their hair was not singed, and their clothes did not even smell like smoke. Nebuchadnezzar passed a law that no one should say anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, because he said, No other god is able to rescue in this way. God had shown Nebuchadnezzar that he is mighty, and he made sure that Daniel's three friends could remind the king to take good care of the Jews. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for protecting Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and for giving them such strong faith in you. Give me that strong faith too. For Jesus' sake, amen. King Nebuchadnezzar was not a believer in Jesus or the God of the Old Testament. Jesus' father, who through the Old Testament, guided his people and protected his people so that they would eventually come to know Jesus Christ, okay? Nebuchadnezzar didn't believe in that. In fact, Nebuchadnezzar thought that he was a pretty important guy and that he should be worshipped as a god instead of the real god. And so he set up a big statue, and when the music would play wherever you were, you had to stop and bow down on the ground and pray to the statue. So if you were at school, you had to do it there. If you were out on the playground, you had to do it there. If you were in your basement or at the grocery store or um, they didn't have cars back then, but imagine that you were driving and you hear the music, I bet you had to pull over and then bow down on the side of the street in order to, to 
make sure that Nebuchadnezzar didn't throw you into this fiery furnace for not worshiping him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, however, knew that there was really only one real God. That was the God who brought them out of Egypt, the God who made Adam and Eve and saved Noah, the God that would eventually reveal himself as Jesus in Bethlehem and die on a cross for our sins and rise again to life three days later. That's who they believed in. And so they refused to bow down to the golden statue. And as he promised, King Nebuchadnezzar had him thrown into a furnace in order to kill them. But God sent an angel. That's who the fourth man was that looked like a son of the gods to Nebuchadnezzar. He looked something different than you and I do. There was something special about him. And he only put three men in the furnace. Why was a fourth? That was one of God's angels who came and protected them. And because of that, Nebuchadnezzar actually came to faith in the true God too. At least he went out of his way not to disrespect the true God after that. And he made provisions for God's people to be able to worship who they wanted. Okay? So, um, we can imagine what that would be like, that God only wants us to worship the true God. Um, and so we don't have any idols uh, today that we, we, golden images. Well, well, maybe maybe we have one, and and maybe we have have it at at church here. You know, um, uh, oh, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Oop, there we are. Maybe you've seen this. Okay, now this is a sculpture of Martin Luther, a very important man to us Lutherans. He was a wonderful, faithful Christian and a very smart Christian. He was a good pastor, okay? And um, he brought us back to a, a real belief in the true God. And, and for that, we like to remember him. And that's part of why we're called Lutherans. But also, we have this statue. It was given to us as a gift in 1983. In 1983, I was three years old, if you can imagine that. Um, and it's gold. It's not real gold. Okay, it is kind of heavy, all right? Um, but we can imagine that, you know, King Nebuchadnezzar wanted his face like this, right? Yeah, And he had to worship it. You might say, well, why do we have this in our church if we're not supposed to have idols and, and things? Well, this is a part of our history, all right? It shows us what Martin Luther looked like, which he lived 500 years ago. So it's kind of neat to be able to kind of see his, his face, this important person that we remember. But in our church, this is off to the side. It, it, it's way over on the side, and sometimes you may not even see it because it's way back there in the corner. And so we remember our history, and it's important that we remember Martin Luther, but we don't pray to him. We don't bow down and worship Martin Luther. Um, no, that space is reserved for Jesus. And so Jesus is at the center, and Martin Luther is off to the side. That's not what Nebuchadnezzar did. Nebuchadnezzar put himself up in front, and you had to bow down and worship him. Um, so you may see this in our church and think, oh, that looks like an idol like King Nebuchadnezzar. No, this is a little bit different. It helps us remember our history, and uh, we worship only Jesus. And Martin Luther would have been the first one to say, don't you dare pray to me. Talk to Jesus. All right? So we'll, we'll put Martin off, off back to the side where he belongs. All right. I'll put him back out in church later. Three questions for you today as we talk about the fiery furnace. How does it feel to know that you have angels that watch over you? That just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had an angel that came to help them, that, that actually revealed himself so they could see him, um, we have angels that we can't see that protect us and watch over us and uh, carry out God's will for us around us in, in ways that we can't see. How does that make you feel to know that you have guardian angels like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? That doesn't mean you should play with fire or do anything silly, but it means that God is watching over you. How does that make you feel? Second, do you think that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew that they wouldn't be burned in the furnace before they were thrown in there? Why or why not? Do you think 
the three of them knew that they wouldn't be burned. Why or why not? And finally, what words would you use to describe Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? These three men who believed in the God that we believe in and worshipped him and refused to bow down to an idol and worship King Nebuchadnezzar, even though they would be thrown into the fiery furnace, what words would you use to describe Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? I'm just curious. Write them down, a nice list, okay? Would you pray the Lord's Prayer with me as we close today? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. One last thing for you students in confirmation. This Bible story about bowing down to Nebuchadnezzar has to do with the first commandment. If you don't know what the first commandment is from memory, I'd like you to go to your catechism and look it up today. Okay? First commandment has to do with why Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't worship King Nebuchadnezzar. Look it up if you don't know it by heart. Okay? I will see you next week. Hopefully, well, we need the rain too, but I would prefer spring weather. So um, hopefully it's a little bit brighter next time that I see you. God bless you and take care.